Hi, welcome to another great episode of Spotlight on Great Blacks and Wax. I'm Sully Myrie. We have another wonderful episode for you today. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Spotlight. We are here with Dr. Barbara Shaw, and she is the chair for this wonderful event that we're having today. And uh, please, uh, can you tell me a little bit about the the process in coordinating such an event? Well, one of the major things that Alma and Joanne wanted was to tell the story of African Americans, tell the whole and the true story. And there were so many categories that they fall in. Last year we did the educational journey where we honored four uh, presidents. This year we are doing the spiritual uplift journey where we are honoring uh, persons of faith. We have been planning for the last 10 months. We've been meeting, we've been collaborating, we've been dreaming, we've been wishing. And today it comes to the point where we have done all that we can do. Now we're just waiting for the shouting. Because you know, as church folk, we do shout when yes. things go well. And so we are so proud of the uh, National Great Blacks and Wax Museum. We honor the memory of Elmer, but we love Joanne, who has continued to carry on um, the fight to make this a great museum a national, only one of its kind. And so today we are honoring Dr. Harold R. Carter, the pastor of Shallow Baptist Church. And That's the whole purpose of this. And yeah. uh, Great Blacks and Wax have grown exponentially yes. from its uh, induction in the 80s, correct? Yes. Now, how do you go about commissioning the actual work for, like, who creates the sculptures? Who? Okay, well, you know, um, that's an interesting story because persons will have to meet the criteria. There is a criteria that's set for member for a membership in the gallery, mm -hmm. and once that's done, <clears throat> there is a tremendous cost that goes with creating I can imagine. a wax figure. And so that once that's done, then the organizations or the persons would then determine the route to take. This time our sculpture's in Ohio. And what he does is that he we give the likeness of the uh, person and he creates a clay image. Since that's a clay image, which is very difficult for me, for Dr. Martin it's very easy. <laughs> but for me it's very difficult. All I see is white clay and I don't see the chocolate or the brown or the and tail. I life just, right. it, yeah. And so, but then you learn how to get an eye for it and then you do it. And then finally, uh, Southwest flies the final figure to Baltimore. And thus, we're here today. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for informing my, us. My and is there anything else you'd like to share before we uh, go? Well. I hope that this goes far and wide because I think the world needs to know about the National Great Blacks and Wax Museum. It is not a local museum, it is a national museum and it's the only museum in the entire United States of America, uh, black 
in wax. And so we ask you to go to our website, go down on North Avenue to visit, and by all means, become a contributing member of the National Great Blacks in Wax Museum. Thank you. You heard it here. Thank you so much. <laughs> we'll be right back. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs>
you hear him, it's my your cue for a promotion. I'll take one. I will take it. I want to do one quick thing. I'm going to personal privilege for a second as the choir begins to leave the stage. Um, I am under the impression that Reverend Dr. Tony Draper is here from our Board of Regents at Morgan State University. And Tony, here she is. Good. Good to see you. Thank you.
There were so many innovative things that came out of Blue Shallow under his leadership. One Saturday or one night he said, I think that we should start moving Sunday school to Saturday school. Some of the elders in the church said, how can we do that? We would lose the romance of Sunday school. But Pastor Carter thought that those persons who were reluctant to come on Sunday, all dressed up, would come on Saturday when they didn't have to be so formal and so dressed up. So that started the New, so New Shiloh Saturday Church School. Been going on for more than 40 years. <laughs> Pastor Harold A. Carter was formally educated. He believed in education. He sponsored education. He lifted up education so that the young children who ran around in Shiloh knew they had to do well because Pastor Carter wanted it that way. And for those of us who were in the middle years at that time, we knew we had to be disciplined and make sacrifices because we were servants of the Lord. And then those who were seniors, who had been around for a long time, thought that they were the special ones of Pastor Harold A. Carter. He had the unique ability to make everyone feels so special. So he was a pioneer. He walked the walk of those who were fighting for the rights of those who looked like I look. He was a provocateur. He probed. He dug into your mind to find out where you were in your relationship with God. And he was a pastor. He cared for the sheep that had been entrusted to him. He loved the people of New Shiloh. And we loved So finally, I would like to say to God, when you're walking around up there, you're going to find a man yeah. who will always be dressed up yeah. in a three-piece suit. I don't care how hot it is, he'll have his tie yeah. right up to his collar. Tell him we miss him. Yeah. Tell him that he's left us in some mighty good hands. Yeah. yourself to our audience. I'm Dr. Karen E. McRae. I'm a resident of Baltimore, Maryland. I attend, I attend God's Amazing Grace 
I'm here um, for this great occasion because mainly because of Dr. Harold Carter and Dr. Bryant, Bishop Bryant. I had the opportunity to meet Dr. Carter before he died through my dad in ministry, Dr. A.C.D. Bond, and attend his church Shiloh and see all of the great things this man contributed not only to the church but to the black community. And uh, what kind of things did you uh, get to witness as far as his contribution to the African American community? Oh, yeah, well, like his walk with the Civil Rights Movement, knowing Martin Luther King, having been there on the forefront when, when batons were changed and when, when things changed in, um, at the Baptist Convention and they elected officers and things like that. And just his statue, the, the, the wisdom that he would impart uh, to, to other ministers and to people in general and the integrity and the honesty that uh, Dr. Harold Carter brought forth in his life was, was some things that I saw. Of course, this is late in his life because I only came to Baltimore in the year 2000. So there are hundreds of people ahead of me who know more about this man, but that's what I saw in the time that I met him. They touched you how to bring the spiritual into the practical. Yes. Understood, understood. That's wonderful to hear. Yes. I really do thank okay. you for your uh, your input and your contribution thank here. Thank you. Thank so anything you. else you want to uh, add to our audience, for our audience before we go? Um, only I would say that anyone watching this, if you have opportunity to go to the Great Black and Wax Museum and, and see the story of African Americans of where we've come from, where we are now, and even possibly where we can go into the future and know that we have a rich and vibrant history uh, and what we've contributed to the United States of America. And I wish everyone well. Thank you so much. You're welcome. We hope that you learned a lot today. We hope you enjoyed the show and come back next time.